What's up YouTube? It's your boy Mark Dark and I'm back with another video. If you're new, if you love the shy, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like the video and leave your theories, comments, everything down below. Now today we're going to be talking about the shy season 5 episode 5. This is the recap. Now I'm going to try my best to focus on all the key points in this episode. If I miss anything, you guys let me know down below. And as I told you guys last night in my quick thoughts early impressions video, this was a solid episode, a very solid episode. Of course, we got to see a little bit more character development from Bakari. And it was very interesting to see, you know, what he was going through. And hopefully Rashad, with the help of Trick, will be able to get him together. But as of right now, we know he's going through some things and him and Jake, they hate each other. Now, also, we saw Keisha and Emmett. They hooked up. He finally clapped those cheeks once again. And it's seeming like things are getting real, real serious. Now, hopefully, we get to see that conversation between all of them and, of course, Tiffany. Y'all know she going to feel some type of way about that. And also, in this episode, we saw Jake and Gemma. They decided to tell Gemma's pops about what's going on and her being pregnant. Do you guys believe Gemma is making a mistake or should she go ahead and try to just have the baby? Your boy Jake said, look, I'm willing to go out there and get three jobs. That man, he is trying to make sure Gemma keeps that baby. As I told you guys last night, Jake's character, you know, is definitely changing a little bit compared to the past. Because we know the old Jake would have been like, hell nah, I ain't taking care of no kids. I ain't ready to be no father. But this Jake, if you notice from the very first episode, he's been trying to find something that he is good at. He has really been thinking about his future and, you know, I think he just wants to be a good person and he wants to, you know, do good. But we're going to see what's going to happen with this whole thing. I still think something's going to happen with Gemma's pregnancy and I don't think it's going to end well, but that's just my early predictions. But as I told you guys, I'm going to try my best to focus on the key points. If I miss anything, you guys let me know down below. So what do we see in episode five? Now it starts off. With Jake telling Gemma, like, look, what are we going to do? It's quite obvious that Jake wants to keep the child. He wants to be the father. He wants to step up to the plate. Gemma's like, well, I'm trying to live. You know, I don't really want no kid right now. And she believes that that's the best decision that she can possibly make. And she tells Jake, like, look, at the end of the day, I respect your opinion and your thoughts about this. But it's my body. I'm going to make that choice when it comes to keeping this baby. But y'all can see. Jake was definitely feeling some type of way about that. He did ask Gemma, why don't you want to have my baby? And I'm going to tell you right now, Gemma felt some way about that because I believe she made her decision at the end of the episode based on not just how she feels, but really, to me, based on how Jake feels and what Jake wants to do. I think she just didn't want to hurt Jake, but we're going to see down the line as far as how this is going to play out and if Gemma really wants to keep the baby and if it's just based on what she believes in or did Jake really have an influence on her decision now we get to Emmett and of course he is still listening to master Marshawn he is trying to get himself together he is trying to be motivated on what he really needs to do right now Keisha she pops up she asks him who's he listening to does this guy have his license or whatever is he you know really legit Emmett is like look he just listens to him because he likes what he is saying and, you know, he's trying to stay out the clubs and all that stuff, trying to focus on doing good and being a, you know, a good man. And Keisha tells him, well, you have always been a good man. Now, Emmett tells her, like, look, he's going to be just kicking it with the boys later on, the OGs, playing cards. And Keisha's like, look, I'm trying to come to game night. I'm trying to kick it with y'all and have a good time. And that's exactly what we end up seeing later on in the episode. Now, Simone wants Kevin to come to this cosplay party. And instead of dressing up as other characters, the whole thing is to come as your own character. So now they have to make up their own little costume, own powers and stuff like that. And she asks Kevin, you know, what type of power would you want to have? And he says, you know, he will make it rain. He loves when it rains. And that's something that he would love to have, you know, the ability to do. So this whole Simone thing and Kevin is going very well, in my opinion, at least as of right now. Now, Treg is seeing that his following is going up. Of course, we see the pictures of him and Tiara, and it's looking real good. And he's dressed up. He's trying to change his image. Jake notices this, and we talked about this scene earlier on in the week. We knew Jake was going to ask him if he'd ever, you know, gotten a female pregnant. 
And Trey never really even answered the question. But he is asking Jake, like, did you get Gemma pregnant? And of course, Jake is not going to tell him the truth. He's going to lie about it. But if we've been 100% honest, Treg knows that this is the case. And he tells him this is why Imani gave you, you those condoms. So you probably should have been using them. We know Jake is going through a lot, but he's going to need all the support he can get, especially dealing with this whole pregnancy thing. This is going to be tough on him. Now we get to Rashad and Deja, and Deja has hooked Rashad up. Done got him a facial. I guess got him feeling like Eddie Murphy on Boomerang. And he's like, man, no one never made me feel like this. Like I'm special and doing all these different things for me. And of course, Deja tells him she never thought, you know, she would get with someone with the record. She always told herself she would never do that. But Rashad changed that. Now we know this whole relationship is getting real serious. Rashad is telling her like, look, I know it's only been a few weeks, but I love you. And she tells him the exact same thing, right? They end up making out. And as I told you guys, it seems like everything is getting real serious between the two. Hopefully, things can continue to be that way. But to be 100% honest with you guys, and I hope I'm wrong, I got a funny feeling that something is going to happen because it's like too good to be true. But we're going to see as these episodes continue to air out. If anything's going to happen with your boy Rashad, but he's trying to get himself together and having Deja around, helping him clean himself up has had a huge impact on him, in my opinion. Then we get the Tracy Duda, Rose, and Q, and apparently it's people out there still in packages, and the people are upset about this, and Rose is like, look, we got to do something about it because we don't want, you know, them to pretty much tell us that this community policing that we are doing is not working which at the end of the day, all that's going to do is, you know, make the police come back. And that is something that they don't want, right? So getting Q and, you know, do that to go down there and, you know, address this, or at least find out who's doing it is something that they need to happen. And Q was talking about, well, maybe we can strike a deal. And Tracy's like, I'm not trying to strike no deal with nobody, no illegal activity. But this is where Q was talking about how, look, we just going to go down there and talk to him. No biggie. And we know Q, he's cool with the cops. He stated that, you know, a lot of his friends were cops or are cops or whatever. So it is what it is with him. Tracy does tell him, yeah, that's because y'all both come from the same cloth. Y'all both dirty. So we know she does feel some type of way about Q still. And that's probably not going to change. But when we talking about Q striking deals with anybody, we know it's going to be, you know, some dirty work going on. But Rose don't care. She's like, look, do what you got to do. Just keep the police away. Then we get to Kevin and Jake. And Kevin is trying to get himself together for this whole cosplay party. Trying to get his costume together. Up there looking like Peter Parker from Spider-Man 1. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Looking like you auditioning to be a member of the Bloods. And you fail. Like, I don't get it. Jake is like, oh, hell nah. Like, don't do it. You know what I'm saying? But Jake wants to have a conversation with Kevin. He wants to tell him, like, look. You know, Gemma is pregnant. And y'all know this is a very serious topic of discussion. We know Gemma and Kevin had a relationship last season. He was in love with her, right? And Jake just wants to hear what Kevin has to say about this. Kevin tells him, like, look, he's sorry about what's going on, but this is a huge decision. And what are y'all going to do? And Kevin is pretty much, he's, you know, talking and giving his opinion and he is telling Jake at the end of the day, it comes down to what Gemma wants to do. You have to respect her body and her decision. We know Jake wants to keep the baby and this is going to be a big deal. Do you guys honestly believe that Jake is ready to do this? Kevin understands like there's no way Jake is ready, right? It's no way. And Jake was like, look, are you jealous of something? And I told you guys in my quick thoughts. Kevin, it's expected for him to feel some type of way about this, right? Because of his past with Gemma. But when it's all said and done, Kevin, he got the better route. You know what I'm saying? He got the better deal. Him and Gemma didn't work out so big. She did what she did. Hop, homie hopped to Jake. Now she's knocked up. Your boy Kevin, he kicking it with Simone. He ain't got to worry about this. So he doing good. Gemma and Jake have to deal with the consequences of their actions and now it's looking real tough but Kevin was there for his boy I did like how Kevin pretty much told Jake like look you're not ready for this he understands because of his sister and what she's been through I mean he's definitely not ready in my opinion but this is what Jake was talking about like look 
No one is really ready for this. But like I told you guys, I agree with Kevin. You know, this is a very complicated situation and they're going to learn. Like, <laughs> this ain't going to be easy. Now, Gemma's feeling bad. She don't know what she wants to do. She's thinking about what Jake said um, as far as keeping the baby. She's having a conversation with Maisha and she talked about how she had a dream and everything was good. But when she woke up, she was scared. So, like I said, Gemma, to me, seems like she don't really want to have it. And she already told Jake that she wants to live her life. But based on that decision that she made at the end of the episode, it really felt like she was doing it not for her, but more for Jake. But y'all let me know what y'all think about that. Then we get to Emmett and Bakari. We learned that Bakari was the one that pulled out that strap on Emmett. And man, he trying to rob him, y'all. He tried to rob him. Emmett is shook. Like, really? He can't believe that he's getting robbed at his own spot. Now, luckily, Rashad was there. Because if Rashad was not there to calm Bakari down, I got a feeling this was not going to end in the best way. Now, Rashad is able to get Bakari to put down the gun. And he's able, you know, to go and have a conversation with him. He tells Emmett, like, look, just give him a chance. Like, this kid, he's all over the place. He just needs somebody, like, you know, just chill out. Everything thing is going to be all right. Could you get him a meal? Emmett was pissed off. Like, really? Like, I'm not trying to get this dude no meal. But we know Emmett does bring some chicken over. Bakari is going through it. He's talking about how he ended up getting kicked out of his, I think his friend's spot. I guess his mom kicked him out. I'm looking like, man, this damn near can be a crossover to power. D-Max mom don't kick the man out. And now he ain't got nowhere to stay, y'all. Your boy Marshall ain't got nowhere to stay. But Rashad tells him just to eat his food. We know Rashad's going to take care of him and make sure he has a place to stay. But man, if Bakari didn't have Rashad, he probably would be locked up right now. Now we get to Jake and Jake is talented. He's, you know, he's able to create this outfit for Kevin. Maybe he can get into art and fashion, but we know Jake was talking about how he wants to be good at something. Well, to me, it's looking like he's good at doing this. And now your boy Kevin has a solid costume for the cosplay party, thanks to Jake. Now, we get to Keisha and Emmett. Of course, Emmett is pissed off about what happened. He was shook that he got a you know gun put out on him. Keisha is telling him to calm down. Everything's going to be all right. He's having game night, remember? And he's bringing in all this chicken. Keisha says, look, don't worry about that. You go take a shower. I will take care of the meals because ain't nobody trying to be eating Smokies all the time. And Keisha, she hooked it up. She was not playing around at all. I mean, why have Smokies when you got Keisha, right? Now, Emmett was tasting the, you know, the chips and dip. And he was like, man, this is good as I don't know what. Of course, he was talking about how he wanted to add it to the menu. And as I told you guys in my quick thoughts video, look at Keisha's face. That's a look of, I'm going to take this man. This is going to be my dude no matter what. I'm not playing around. I'm locking him down. He is going to be mine. That's the look that Keisha is giving Emmett. I told y'all, she's taking this serious. She ain't playing around, and we know eventually she wants to tell Tiffany about what she's been doing. And when that happens, I'm telling you right now, I cannot wait to see it. Then we get to Fatima and Treg. I mean, Victor, they're on a little date or whatever, and we know Treg is telling her about what's going on as far as, you know, the whole politics stuff, and we know his following is blowing up because of Tierra in, in the pictures that they're posting. It. And this is when Fatima tells him, of course, your following is going up. That's because people are attracted to a straight cis black couple. Right. And this is where Trek is like, well, you know, if I like trans woman, you know, a trans woman is a woman. So that makes me straight. Right. And Fatima tells him exactly. But when was the last time you were with a cis woman? And this is where, you know, Tread couldn't really answer the question. He was just like, man, you know, I see, I understand. And, you know, but what does that make me? What is the word for that? We know Tread has a type. He's attracted to trans women. And if that's what he likes, so be it. Now, Fatima's whole thing is this. If you are in love with trans women, you need to be coming out and you need to express this to the public. You cannot hide this. So... This is why, in my opinion, in the last episode, she was like, you know, so what about the credit that Imani deserves for Trinity House? Because we know Imani is the co-founder of Trinity House, but we know Treg did not mention that until 
Fatima brought it up, right? So she just wants it out. She tells Treg, you need to express that love for us because if you don't, it erases us. So now Treg is like, man, okay, I see what you're saying. And she does tell Treg, if you don't come out and tell the truth, eventually it's going to get out. We know this. We've been talking about this. We know it's going to get out eventually. Might as well say it because when it comes out, it ain't going to look too good. And she says, if you don't come out, somebody else is going to come out and expose you, catch you slipping. And that someone, in my opinion, is probably going to be Fatima. But we're going to see down the line how all of this is going to play out. We know Trev was talking about it could possibly, you know, mess up the votes. But deep down inside, Trek, he just doesn't want it to get out. But that's just my opinion. Then we get to Q and Duda. They find out the people that's still in those packages or whatever. And your boy Q, he got the strap pulled out on him. He tells them like, look, I am the boogeyman, right? Now they're able to talk their way out of this. This guy, he probably should have just pulled the trigger if he was smart. But then Duda told him, if you do that, you're not going to make it back home. Now Q tells him like, look, I want 20% on every dollar you make to continue to run this operation because we ain't having it. The dude was upset about it, but look, Q was about to take this man's life. You know what I'm saying? The OG, triple OG was not playing around. It was not going to end well for him. So of course he decided to agree with the terms. And Duda said, look, on top of that 20%, I need y'all to donate to The Rock Center. So they done went in and hustled and bum rushed these dudes and pretty much told them, this is what y'all gonna do or you're gonna suffer those consequences. Now, we know Q is kind of upset with Duda because he's like, look, the next time you better be a little bit quicker on the draw if something like that ever happens because I almost killed that man with my bare hands. We know Q, he was cool. He was like, man, this reminded me of the old days. But I'm gonna tell you right now, it's some issues going on between Duda and Q. I mentioned this, you know, weeks ago. Something's gonna happen because Duda is tired of taking orders from Q. But as of right now, as Duda has stated, Q is the money man and he needs the money man around. But we know eventually something's bound to happen. You guys let me know what y'all think about that. Rashad brings Bakari to Treg's spot. Of course, Treg is not there and he doesn't even know what's going on. But your boy Rashad is telling him like, look, man, what are your dreams? What do you want to be? We know Bakari doesn't really have an answer, but he tells him like, look, if I start telling you my dreams, I want you to tell me yours. So it's definitely seeming like Bakari is opening up a little bit more. And that's exactly what he needs to do to get himself together. And, you know, with Rashad being there for that extra support, that is something that Rashad didn't have growing up. So that's more motivation for him to do this for this kid. Now we get back to Trek and Fatima, but this time around they making out, it's looking like they getting close, right? And Trek, he is the one pushing for it. He is telling her like, look, I want more. Well, you better be ready for those consequences. She's talking about now we have a secret and stuff like that. You know, you can trust me. Let's just be honest. No one can be trusted. And when this does get out, we know, well, at least in my prediction, I won't be surprised if she was the person that puts it out and on top of that he's in broad daylight i mean you got the g-wagon out there everybody knows that's you so it doesn't really seem like he's trying to hide anything right now he gets back home he's all happy rashad notices that he's happy he's trying to ask him about what's going on with him but we know they end up talking about bakari and treg at first he was like nah that's not going to work out but Rashad ain't having it. Rashad, he is the reason Bakari is there and he's not going to allow this kid, you know, to not have that support. Tells Trek, like, we needed somebody like us around. So give this kid a chance. So that's exactly what's going to happen. But Trek does tell him if anything goes down, you know, this kid is up out of here. Then we get to one of my favorite parts of the episode, the game night. We got Darnell, Trek, Rashad, Keisha, and Emmett. They in there playing cards, spades or whatever, having a good old time. I mean, they're just talking, you know, the same talk you would have with your peoples on a party night or a kickback or something like that. And they're talking about the 80s music, the 90s music. It's just fun for real. Like I told you guys in my Quick Thoughts Early Impressions video, it really seemed like they just told them to go out there and wing it. Like they told them to go out there and just have a conversation. Did not seem like they were acting at all. 
and to me it felt real natural but one thing that we kept seeing during these scenes was the bonding the connection that Emmett and Keisha had and everybody was noticing it they was peeping game like okay Emmett y'all cool like y'all y'all real tight and everybody can tell that these two were more closer than previous before I mean you can just see it and it was cool that Keisha decided to you know come there because we know Emmett he wasn't really trying to have it as far as her being there but she still was there and everybody loved her food it was just good vibes during those scenes at game night now we get back to Tracy and Duda and Rose and of course Q and we know Tracy's pissed off she's like look I told y'all to stop you know that illegal activity but y'all going in there making deals taking 20 percent she ain't having it and she's upset Rose don't care she's like look we need some more alliances and you know maybe just tell them to keep it low you know for a little bit right she just wants to keep everything at bay with the cops and wants to continue to gain money for what she's doing right now Tracy's pissed off at Duda like man I can't believe this is going down like what's going on I mean Q is just doing exactly what he wants to do anything he wants to do it goes down and you just sitting back allowing it and Duda tells her well he's the money man we got to do things the way he wants things to go at least for right now and Tracy's upset talking about I looked at you you know as a beacon for love and all this stuff like that she had high hopes of Duda I told you guys this weeks ago I don't know what she's thinking like she's safe around Duda but no that's not going to happen but Duda took that personal Duda wants to do something about this and in my opinion I believe this is just another reason why Duda and Q are going to clash by the end of the season but you guys let me know about this now Papa comes over he's kicking it with Bakari they smoking and Papa's like look I just want to be here to see Jake's reaction when he sees you and Papa is talking about man black boys in their dreams because they end up talking about how Rashad and you know Bakari going to have a conversation about what his dreams are and Papa's like man I can use this as a topic of discussion for my podcast Bakari just looking back like dude <laughs> you talk entirely too much but you know he messes with Papa that's his boy and that's a good thing as long as Papa doesn't go out there and do nothing stupid I'm cool with it um, Papa definitely needs to speak his mind but he needs to stay out of trouble at the same time but we know that's probably not going to be the case now we get to Kevin and Simone at the cosplay party and they're having a good old time Simone is happy that Kevin is there and apparently they're going to have some awards or whatever um, for costumes now they did not win the coolest costume award but they end up winning I believe it was the uh, best innovation and also best couples costume award and once they announced that man they was happy Kevin and Simone they was happy as hell that they won something and that's good as I told you guys we know Kevin he ain't been having the best of luck when it comes to relationships at least in these past few seasons so it is good seeing that he is actually catching a W but the season it ain't over yet man we still got another half to go hopefully Kevin can continue to have good luck now we get to Marcus and Gemma and Jake have decided to tell him the truth about what's going on with her being pregnant and he's upset he's like look y'all are not ready to raise a child now did y'all peep what Gemma said she said is anyone ready right this to me is more of Jake and what he is thinking this is what Jake pretty much told um, Kevin when they had the conversation earlier on in the episode so in my opinion I believe Gemma and what she is doing and what she is saying is more because she doesn't want to hurt Jake I believe deep down inside she doesn't want to have the baby now I can be completely wrong but based on you know her recent actions it seems like she is just trying to make Jake feel good and this whole baby thing is going to blow up I don't think it's over yet based on these trailers something is bound to happen some of you guys say miscarriage or Gemma could just come out and say look I don't want to have the baby Jake I'm sorry I know you want to but I don't want to I want to live my life and I don't want to do it at least as of right now trying to raise a child we know Jake was talking about you know he'll get three jobs he'll take care of her and all this stuff but that's going to be a lot of stress a lot of stress especially at that age hell any age working three jobs I mean that's going to be a lot for your boy so what is going to happen down the line your boy Marcus told him like look Gemma 
It's your body going to make that decision. But if you do this, ain't no going back. So y'all know Gemma's going to think about this, man. It's going to get to her because when it's all said and done, she is going to be the person that's going to have to make that decision. Then we get to Treg. Y'all see he is texting Fatima good night and all that stuff. Look, the man's in love already. I told y'all she can't be trusted and I still believe this is going to blow up in his face. I mean, how he thinks it's going to play out. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a big deal. Now, Jake comes back home. He sees Bakari there. He's pissed off. He's upset. We know the two don't like each other at all, and they're about to get into a fight. Luckily, Treg and Rashad come there, and they shut everything down. I'm eager to see how this is all going to work out with both of them in that household. Papa, he's in there talking about this is great, whatever. You know, I'm glad that y'all are doing something good for the community. And Rashad had me cracking up. He said, man, take your goofy ass home. Like, <laughs> had me cracking up. Your boy Rashad, he don't be holding back. But he definitely kept it real. Because Papa, he be acting goofy sometimes. Then we get to Jake. You can tell this whole pregnancy thing is on his mind. He is trying, I guess, to do better. He feels like, you know, being a father, stepping up to the plate is something that he needs to do, at least as of right now. I told you guys, I don't see this whole thing playing out the way Jake believes it's going to play out. It's more drama to come down the line. Now, the party is over. Game night is over. Darnell is telling Emmett, look, you be safe because he already know he about to have a great time with Keisha. Keisha's been ready. She loves Emmett. Emmett loves her. The chemistry is there. This whole little challenge he's been doing, uh, the whole Master Marshawn 40 day no sex challenge. Oh, that's over. I told y'all because once she throw that thing at him, it's a wrap. Your boy Emmett finally clapped Keisha's cheeks. They're finally back together for real. And it's getting real serious between the two. Emmett was talking about, did I manifest this? Y'all know your boy Emmett. He was dreaming of this day. He was hoping and praying that this would actually happen um, once again. And it is. So we're going to see this time around how it's all going to play out, especially once Tiffany finds out what's going on between the two. And also, I did forget to talk about Rashad and that gun. Remember, Rashad took the strap from Bakari. Now, do you guys believe something is going to happen with that gun down the line? Hopefully, that's not the case. I told you guys I do believe something's going to go down with Rashad and this relationship with uh, Deja. I just don't see it playing out the way they think it's going to play out or he thinks it's going to play out. It seems like it's too good to be true in my opinion. Now, I hope I am wrong. I hope your boy Rashad can just be cool. You know what I'm saying? He can have a good old time with Deja and there's no issues for him. But we're going to see what's going to go down with that whole storyline down the line. You guys let me know what y'all think about that. But overall, man, episode five, it was a solid episode. We got the OG uh, Q returning. We got a lot of action and I can't wait to see what's next. Now, I will be doing a What to Expect video for episode six in a few days, so I want you guys to stay tuned for that. But continue to follow the playlist. Continue to keep yourself updated on all the latest The Shy Season 5 news, and I will continue to give you guys these videos. But thank you guys once again for all the love, all the support, and I will catch y'all on the next one. But let me get up on out of here, man. It's your boy Mark Dark. I'm out. Peace.